<laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Clubhouse Movies Podcast. Today is a very special day. It is Halloween. Happy Halloween. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. This is copyrighted. <laughs> well, I'm just saying three words in no particular order for no particular rhyme. Halloween, this is Halloween. This is Halloween, this is. Halloween, this is. <laughs> Say, <laughs> Halloween this is. <laughs> and uh, last year on Halloween, we reviewed House of a Thousand Corpses because it was a Halloween movie. And yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. But this time, we chose two movies, a duology, if you will, a grindhouse double feature of The Shining. The Shining and Doctor Strange. No, I'm kidding. Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. And if you haven't seen Doctor Sleep, go see Doctor Sleep. We'll see them both. Yes. Because they both complement each other very well. Yeah, and like I told you, I didn't want to watch Doctor Sleep because I felt like it was going to ruin The Shining for me. Boy, did it do the opposite for me. Yes, and I saw it again today, like both of them, and uh, there was like, I was trying to think if this was intentional or not, but there's like some time travel, like foreshadowing stuff going on too. Yeah, right? So like... As you know, what is the most classic? There's a couple of actually really classic scenes from The Shining. One is, uh, here's Johnny with yeah. Jack Nicholson tearing and the... all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. But also, Red Rum. Yeah, Red Rum. And then Danny Torrance, when he was a boy, was freaking out and he wrote Red Rum on the wall, right? Yes. Now, was that an echo from the future? That's the thing. Because why else would it say... Why else would a murder... Because... the in the future, a murder happens that's so horrific. Yeah, that red rum is echoed, like like a, like yeah, a, it is like timeless. A, like a, yeah, like a shock wave. Yeah, and the, and the funny thing is, um, well, I don't know if you saw this, but when his mom wakes up and sees it, she sees murder first. Yes, and he wakes up and he sees red rum first because one's the reflection and one's the real one. And it's yeah, the so it's just like more more of it. You're like, oh, <laughs> and also. Uh, Another callback is I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go full spoiler mode on this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen him, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll go through the plot and everything, and everything yeah. is scary too. But in the very beginning of dark, of of the in the very beginning of The Shining, Jack Nicholson is telling the story of the Donner Party. They got stuck yes. out there, and they got forced to eat each other. And, oh, did that happen out here? No, that happened somewhere, you know, somewhere west of here. Yeah, somewhere along the Sierras. But that's the ending to Doctor Sleep. Oh, right. They all became starving, and they all had to eat each other. Yes, they did. Because wow. they're, they're all big cannibals. That's Yeah, and, the, and not cannibals in eating their human flesh and stuff, but cannibals in eating the, their shining power. They all eat. They all consume the shine. Yeah. Which is uh, this the little moonshine. <laughs> it's like the force. <laughs> <laughs> they, they eat the force. I wrote that. And look, I'm going to say this right now. In Harry Potter, they're called death eaters, and they eat souls. So that's essentially what they're doing here. Well, but it's like soul powers. They're, they're, they're like vampires. They're vampires yeah. that eat the shine. Yeah. Uh, they, they didn't. Soul pyres. Yeah. They didn't uh, <laughs> cover this that much in uh, in the shining because the ghosts wanted to eat the shine. Yeah. They were they were hungry for it. Yeah. So you didn't know why the ghosts were so like ravenous until you watched Dr. Sleep and it all just ties in so handsomely. Very nice. I know. Well, like I said before, this is our Halloween episode. Everyone, welcome to Clubhouse Movies Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Rubicala, joined once again by Mr. Abel Panetta. And today we'll be doing our Shining Double feature, featuring The Shining, directed by Stanley Krubick and Dr. Sleep, directed by Mike Flanagan. Danny Torrance is cursed with the ability to communicate with the unseen world. There are creatures both living and dead that seek to consume those who shine like Danny. As a boy, Danny is forced to survive an attack from a haunted hotel, and as an adult, he must protect a gifted young adult that is pursued by a group of vampires that seek to consume those who shine. Okay. Mike Flanagan did the Haunting of Hill House uh, series on Netflix. Did he also? I did he also do um, what is that series called? Um, Midnight Mass, I believe. Maybe I don't know. Also very. good. Good show. Let me let me look this up to make sure because if you guys have not seen Midnight Mass, 
on Netflix. It is fantastic. But I feel like Mike Flanagan did a really good job on this, and he actually did it with the blessing of uh, Stephen King, who famously hated The Shining movie. Yeah. But I think he's warmed up to it over the years. Yeah. It's just, it, so, yes, uh, uh, Mike Flanagan. Okay, good. Yeah, I think he also did Ouija 2, which is significantly better than Ouija 1. <laughs> I have not seen either of those. Yeah. <laughs> of course. But, you know, we, 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 we want to... Uh, Discuss the, one of the scariest movies of all time because you know a lot of people think The Shining is one of the scariest movies. It's and I'll say this: it's not one of the scariest. It's one of the most unnerving movies. I think so too. And and Doctor Sleep, I don't even know if you consider it a horror movie. It's a it it, it felt like a weird coming of age, uh, like not slasher, but I guess suspense. Suspense, yeah, thriller. suspense thriller. Yeah, because so the one thing I will say about both of these movies, and I'm so glad they kept the motif going here, is there, there are two things for me as a guy who loves uh, filmmaking is the score for both were just, man, perfect. It was just like really like percussional. Yeah, ton of it. And it was so like situational. It was just like it's right when like, something would happen, you'd hear like the piano would just smash. Yeah, and you hear people running. You hear actual foot like nothing else but just feet running through a hallway. And also the color palette, like yes, the color palette made these movies. It was great. <laughs> and if you've ever, uh, there's a documentary. I think it's called Room Two Thirty Seven. And it's about all the conspiracy theories in The Shining. Really? So a lot of people think that like it's a confession that they fake the moon landing. Yeah. That's why Danny wears the moon landing shirt or something, the Apollo shirt. I didn't notice that. And they're also saying that uh, the Overlook Hotel can't possibly exist because yeah. if you've actually, because for whatever reason, we actually follow characters multiple times through this place. We do. Yes. Right? We, we, uh, Danny actually goes on many rides. And then yeah. like if you... <laughs> There's people who actually plot like Danny's his rides. route. Yeah, yeah, his route, and they're like, he clearly is like a maze, and he gets stuck here. He should be stuck here, but he's in another room this time. Now he's in this room. And yeah, it's also room. called the power of filmmaking. Yeah, um, duh. And but, but I forgot to mention. I don't know if you ever caught if you caught this. So in the and this has to do with one room. In the room where Jack Torrance is being interviewed by the hotel management. Yes, it is also the same room that Dan Torrance is in later on. Yeah, so so when uh, when Jack uh, Torrance, his name yeah. is also Jack. Yeah, his name is <laughs> Jack Nicholson's all, name is always Jack. He was he was Jack Napier in the first Batman. <laughs> we'll trip on this too. The kid pl who played Danny was also named Danny in the original shiny. Did you know he was in Dr. Sleep also? No, I didn't when, ba when they were when they were uh, scouting baseball boy. He was always like baseball boy. He's the best baseball player and the best baseball player time. He was the one sitting next to crow. No Daddy. way. Yeah, that was him. Whoa, <laughs> nice. God, so much goodness here. Yeah, there's a lot of weirdness like, like poetry, <laughs> like Jack Nicholson was reading a playgirl <laughs> in the in the lobby of the hotel waiting for the interview. It's like what? Oh, really? Dang, I was writing notes. I didn't even freaking <laughs> realize what was happening, but yeah, that, that's the exact same spot. And then I also kind of have this weird feeling that the bartender in the hotel was Jack Nicholson's dad. Yes, because if you watch Doctor Strange, it is Doctor Sleep. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you watch Doctor Sleep. Yeah, the stupid it's taken. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel <laughs> Disney. Yeah, it, it, so if you watch Doctor Sleep, that scene lends itself back to, you know, it's it's Jack's so, serving uh serving his son who is also a recovering alcoholic. Yeah, as Jack was. There was a and there was a lot of like also theories about the uh, the ghosts in The Shining that maybe they were real or maybe they weren't. Uh, but yeah, there was a scene where they locked Jack Nicholson in the pantry. Yeah, and the, the ghost let him out. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, and then uh, at the end, uh, I guess they we do. What's your name? Uh, Wendy. Is it Wendy? The mom. Yeah, Wendy. Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. Yeah, sees the ghost too. So I guess they, I guess they were real. Yeah, they were real <laughs> enough. But I like how the place was actually built on an Indian burial ground. They went over the. And whole they just thing. mentioned it like just in passing. Yeah, like, like, oh, hey, I don't know if you pay buy into this stuff, but <laughs> bunch of death. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and they were both tragedies. Even like the bad guys in Doctor Sleep were kind of a tragedy in the in the end, really. Yeah. So, lot to follow. So if you don't know the story, 
Jack Nicholson is a writer, and he needs a <laughs> Jack. Nicholson plays Jack, Jack Torrance, Torrance. Jack. who is a writer. Although I feel like this character really is Jack Nicholson if he was let loose on the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the way, here's his masterpiece. In case you can't, in case you can read that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> all work and no play make. Did you did you see like when they show the all work and no play make Jack and Dole Boy? There's like typos. Yeah, and yeah, like, typos. Okay, they're like they're all compressed. I mean, because whoever wrote that. Had to actually write it back. Some poor, some poor page had to write that on a typewriter. Oh right? man, he wrote <laughs> like a few. He probably wrote a hundred pages just in case. Yeah. Right. Oof. From what I hear, uh, Stanley Kubrick was a crazy perfectionist. Uh, I, everything uh, was pretty crazy. But anyway, he is an aspiring. or he's he is a writer who needs to find some peace and quiet, and he takes a job as a caretaker at the Overlook Hotel in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Yeah, up in the freaking mountains. And, he, and during the interview, they say, oh, by the way, this place is built on an Indian barrel ground and the last the last caretaker murdered his family yeah. <laughs> and himself or something. Uh, he's like, ah, it's okay. Places don't kill people. Yeah, uh, he was like, oh, he's like, you sure? Because, you know, being, you know, you're going to find yourself secluded for about five months. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, wow, with, with no alcohol. Yeah, no alcohol. We, we I mean, he's a re- and he's a recovering alcoholic. So he's like, yeah, don't don't worry about it. And then uh, we smash cut to uh, Danny, young Danny. Who's, yeah, it was a it was a boy at this point, getting a, a house call from a doctor, I guess, just to make sure he's okay. But I guess Jack like slapped him once or something. When he no, was drunk. so so Jack, I guess, arrived one day to find to find Danny had uh, strewn about his paperwork, his, all of his book or whatever the heck yeah. his manuscript. And Jack reached for him, grabbed him, and yanked him by the arm, like so so rough that he actually dislocated Dan Danny's shoulder. Mm. Like the kid's a two year old man. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's when he stopped drinking. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if Jack Nicholson was always a horrible person or Jack Torrance was always a horrible person, but he was secluded in this hotel doing nothing like he literally yeah. was just like war, like like throwing a ball against a wall yeah like, like a douchebag it was so loud <laughs> yeah yeah and and meanwhile like it was his job to be the caretaker and he just writes when he can but it seems like like Wendy took care of everything. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, <laughs> she's I mean, cooking, she's doing the boiler room, she's doing this, she's doing yeah, that. And, and like apparently we find out that Jack Torrance has this uh this uh aggressive just he's just an aggressive person. But you kind of get a feel for that when he's throwing the ball at the wall. Normal people would throw a ball at a wall just like quick little throws, catch. He is full on, full body throwing that ball as hard as he can and just snatching it out of the air. I'm like, dude, that's a lot of work, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and like we said, uh, Danny is going like full big wheel throughout the hotel yeah. in, in weird, bizarre circles that can't possibly exist. Yeah. They're like, he should be outside here, but he's not. He should be this place, but he's not. He's in the same place, and then he crosses the room. So yeah, he crosses room 237. Right there. Which is, uh, I, I forget, but in the book, it was a different room because the hotel they filmed at, they didn't want them to use the, uh, the actual room the actual number, room number uh, because there is a room 237 there. But he films that. I think he just passes it the first time. Yeah. But no, then, no. He actually stops. To look at it? To look at it. I think he tried to open it. It was locked. Okay. Yeah. It was locked because I remember that camera pan right through the little handlebars. Yeah, it was a pretty good pan. Yeah. And no, I forget, we forgot to mention uh, Dick Halloran. Yes, right before right before they uh, they took over, they met the uh, I guess the head the, chef, the head chef, yeah, uh, who's uh, played by Scatman Crothers. Man, that guy, that guy seems like a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, you know my grandma used to like to shine. You know, she so she she told he told Danny all about what the shining was. You could read minds. Yeah, because yeah, it's he special. called him Doc. And he's like, and Wendy was like, how'd you know we would call him Doc? Doc, what's the first what's the first syllable of the name of the second movie? First syllable? Yeah. Doc. Doc. Yeah. His name was Doc from the beginning. I know. <laughs> I was like, is there something deeper here? No. No, is it? <laughs> Do- you, he was Dr. Sleep since the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he told him about The Shining. He told him that there's that there is something in the in the in the hotel that's like burnt toast. You just can't yeah. quite get rid of it. It's a it's like a picture book. Mm-hmm. It's just pictures. They can't do anything to you. Yeah, so so he, he was warned, and then he says, just use the shining if you need me for anything. I don't know if he said that. Maybe that, no. that was the Simpsons. <laughs> just don't be reading my, my mind between five and ten. Five and ten. Oh, man. You know, they have all those uh, those Simpsons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
all those uh, Halloween Simpsons episodes on uh, Disney Plus, right? They're all there. And they, pl- they have a playlist. Do, oh, you know what? It's I really have, good. Did the new one come out yet? I it probably seen. has. I mean, Halloween. By the time of year, it'll be out for yeah. sure. The only episodes of The Simpsons that I have seen in the last 10 years has only been the Halloween episodes. Yeah, that's all I watch. I, I have no time for anything else to dedicate my time. <laughs> there was one that was actually kind of creepy. Which uh, one? One year. I probably saw it. It was the one where Homer was left alone and Marge left him like a like a lasagna or something and he was like slicing it and he sliced off his finger. Oh yeah. And he was too lazy to like take it off, but he like cooked it with it. Yes. And he ate it. He's like, this is so good. Dude, that was weird. And then then he went to the Ned Flanders barbecue and he's eating the barbecue. He's like, this is like not good. He's like, well my barbecue is world renowned. I don't know what's wrong. Like he's like, I don't know. <sighs> something else I ate it was like yeah, it's better like, than this. Yeah, it's like a, it has like a Sweeney Todd take on it. But but he Make just meat pies out of people. Not even people. It was himself. Yeah. He was just hacking away at himself That's and like so cooking himself and eating himself. And then like when Marge came home, like he was all like twisted and distorted, like missing a hand. Yeah. Uh and uh dude, it's so weird. Yeah, and then and then she she figured out that he's like eating himself. And he's like, we're going to start running out of you. And then, like, you're going to start dying. He's like, but I'm so tasty, you know? And uh, he just eventually withered away into nothing. And then, like, he, ha- he hired some, like, Wolfgang Puck to, like, cook the last of them when he died. But that was a creepy episode. That is super weird. No wonder I put that one in the, <laughs> the recess of Here, my mind. Type type episode of uh, Simpsons where Homer eats himself. Because that, that's, that's a call. And I think the other two stories for that were actually really good also. Um... So, uh, oh, dude, I typed in Simpsons episode where and it just auto filled Homer eats himself. What's, what's the name of the episode? It was a uh, yeah, treehouse of horror. So 2018, 2018, 2018 episode. That was the best one, but also a good one was the one where they did rip on the shining where Homer was no TV and no, no beer, no TV make Homer go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no TV, <laughs> no beer, make Homer go something, something. Mark's yeah. like, go crazy. <laughs> don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> just like it, man. Don't don't mind if I do. Oh, uh, All right, let's get back to the show. Uh, but Here anyway, he goes crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then Danny. Uh, okay. Wh- while he's going crazy, he goes into the bar. Yeah. Meets the bartender. Mind Lloyd. you, we forgot to tell you that because of the insurance policy at this hotel, all of the liquor is removed from the grounds. Mm-hmm. So there you go. During so, the winter, it's, it's yeah, completely just, secluded. Yep. So he goes to the bartender and Lloyd is there and he's like, we don't he, know who Lloyd is. We just know he serves. He's the bartender. Yeah, but but based on Dr. Sleep, I can sur- surmise that Lloyd is actually his dad. Yeah, Jack, Jack Torrance is dead. Jack Torrance senior. Yeah. <laughs> So as far as we know, but he's just compl- he's just complaining about Wendy. Yeah, he calls her the old sperm bank. Yeah, and then, what yeah. A douche. I know, right? And then uh, Lloyd, the bartender, is like, "Women can't live with them. Can't live without them." Yeah, <laughs> and Jack's like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> and uh, Wendy comes running in and says, "Oh no, oh no, Danny was attacked. Yeah. Danny was attacked." And but Lloyd's gone, like he disappeared. Yeah, so right? he's just been sitting at a bar that was just previously stocked. To yeah. The tease. yeah, and he and he uh, he apparently had some whiskey. Yeah, uh, but the whiskey disappeared too. Yeah, ghost so he whiskey. Just had, he just has a glass there. Uh, and then this is probably one of the weirder scenes in the movie where he goes to room two thirty seven, yeah. the most haunted room in the hotel, and he finds a like a good looking naked woman in the bathtub. Just yeah, and, and then, you know this is gonna go south real fast. And then and then like the music's all like. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> like she's either a vampire, some kind of demon. She's a some Jezebel sort of, of she's some, some sort. sort of ghost. And yeah. he goes over to like make out with her. And as he's making out, because he her, has this guy, Jack is just a douchebag. Yeah, we've we've covered that. Well, he looks. He's got like funny look on his face. Like uh, yeah. he's like, hey, 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 hey baby, hey, what's going hey, on? Jack. How long have you been in this bathtub? <laughs> Apparently, a long time. Because when the camera comes back around, years. she's a rotting old woman. <laughs> oh man! And she starts laughing like a witch. <laughs> and if you've seen uh, Ready Player One, you've actually seen this scene. They visit the entire uh, Overlook Shay. Hotel. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a pretty cool scene for uh from that movie. From this movie, though, it is it is haunting. It is grotesque. Ready Player One also featured a Chucky. 
Yeah, it did. <laughs> also terrifying. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so I guess he just leaves after that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, nope. And then he gets to the room with Wendy and and Jeff. Danny. Danny. Yeah. yeah, who's just like, you know, he's just stuck and dumbfounded. And she's like, did you see anything? He's like, nope, nope, not, not a thing. Didn't see anything. Don't know what you're talking about. It's like, come on. Come on, guy. Yeah. Come and, on. and at some point during one of Danny's many rides, he runs into the Grady twins who uh, oh, yeah. who the previous caretaker hacked into pieces. And they're like, come play with us, Danny. Their, their father, by the way. Yeah. The father, the father, the caretaker. Yeah. Hacked them, hacked them into pieces. Uh, so after this, Jack goes back to the the ballroom, but this time it's swinging. Roaring, yeah. Roaring 20s party. Yeah. Totally roaring 20s uh, going on here. And uh, he goes back to talk to... Uh, the uh, bartender gets a drink, and then as he's like walking away, he runs into a maitre d' who spills yeah. all a bunch of uh, his drink on him. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like some kind of freaking like orange or drink or something. Drink, yeah. yeah, and he goes, "Don't worry about it, like Jeeves, I'll you know we'll wash right out." And they go to the bathroom, and he's blotting the uh, he's blotting it in this point. Yeah, and he goes, "Wait a minute, I know you." He goes, I, I don't know, sir. And he goes, you're the caretaker. He's like, no, I'm not. And he goes, no, you're the caretaker. He's like, you killed your family. You hacked him to bits. And then, then the ghost like gives him a look. He's like, I think I would have remembered that, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and then at some point, like the jig is up. Yeah. It's like they got like they realized who was who. Yeah. He's like, you will do this. He's like, you need to kill your family. And he's like, and then there's he's like, and then there's someone like coming. <laughs> And the thing is, so this just seems super off until you watch Doctor Strange and you realize that the people who have the shining or have been eating the shining have this way to persuade people. Yeah, and, and it just ties in so well. It makes the shining that much better. There there's a director's cut of the shining too. Yeah. Where uh Jack, the dad, mm-hmm. was um also in the bathroom with uh adult Danny and they had like further their conversation about about parenting and stuff and kids. What? And, yeah. From what I hear, the director's cut's actually better. So Wait, The Shining or Doctor Sleep? Doctor Sleep. Sleep. Okay. So, you know, it it, it does come full circle. Yeah. Uh, but Danny now senses danger imminent, and he contacts uh, Dick Halloran, yeah. who uh, has some crazy, like, naked pictures on his wall. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the freaking hell, dude? <laughs> like, out of nowhere. Uh, but he uses The Shining to, you know, yeah. I, guess, I, guess, I, guess, his- I guess Willie had a point. <laughs> In the Simpsons, don't be reading my mind between five and ten. Oh yeah, yeah. And he was <laughs> just Dick's twenty four hours uh, on, on the on the case. Yeah. So Holleran just right there, just laying in his bed, watching the news with his eyes wide open, just oh yeah, seizing going out through, practically, yeah, going through the shining verse, and just like holy crap, someone is gonna die. Yeah. And Danny's like like foaming at the mouth, trying to like contact. Him. Yeah. Danny's going. Uh, Danny calls his shining Tony. Mm-hmm. He's like red rum. Ram! Who may actually be Abra in the future saying this? Yeah, yeah, mm. we don't know. So, so he contacts Dick Halloran. Yeah, who promptly tries to like call the police and get like yeah. help. And and mind you, Dick Halloran because he's this chef, he is gone for the season, so he he he's lives in, in Florida. Florida yeah. yeah, he's like, bye, Denver. I'm a snowbird. I'm out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so he calls him, and then uh, the sheriff is like, "All right, give me twenty minutes. I'll try to get a hold of him. All this jazz and stuff, mind you. It's the eighties, mm-hmm. or rather, the late seventies, if this movie's filmed that way. Yeah, and they don't have cell phones. They don't have like landlines. They're going by ham radio. <laughs> yeah, ham radio and yeah. snowcats. Exactly. Yeah, snowcats. Yeah, even. So the comp, the uh, the sheriff tries calling, gets no contact, and then Hollering calls back and says. Have you tried to get a con? Did you guys succeed in getting contact? While that's happening, Jack himself has gone over to the ham radio and somehow is a damn ham radio technician and knows how to take out the damn freaking batteries out of the ham circuit board. Well, he's possessed, right? Yeah, so I'm assuming some ghost told him how to do it. Yeah, like, <laughs> and he also destroyed the uh, the snow cap. Yeah, he did. He, t- t- he took off the uh, distributor cap. But the, uh, that's all he did. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but uh, there's a famous scene that comes up here somewhere where. That's when uh, Wendy goes up to his typewriter. Oh yeah, and sees that he wrote hundreds and like we said hundreds and hundreds of times. Yeah, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. But, and the thing is, the 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 what is it? The attention to detail is so good because you'd expect it to just be top down like a rectangle, but it is actually in like stanzas. Yeah, it is written out. And yeah, like it's like perfectly written out. I'm just like, Ooh. it's even and, scarier. 
And then um, and then Jack confronts her. He's like, you can't be bothering me when I'm working. <laughs> I'm like busy doing all kinds of things here. Like, and then you, you do this. And then and then like she's got like a baseball bat. Yeah. She's like swinging at him. And he's like, what are you going to do with that baseball bat there, Wendy? And I know what I would do if I yeah. had that baseball bat. I'd bash your brains in. He's like, and I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. As they're going like up these like, yeah. like triumphant stairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like this, she's she's walking up backwards. Like fantastically, by the way. I would have tripped like five times. I know, right? And she's like swinging like dry <laughs> swings at him. Foosh, yeah. Foosh, foosh, foosh. And then she eventually like gets him. Yeah, and, like, catches hits him, him in the hand. Yeah, and then uh, and then hits him again and knocks him out and then drags him to the pantry. Yeah, he falls down the stairs just like his son does in Doctor Sleep. Mm-hmm. In the exact mm-hmm. same spot where, where that finale happens. Um, so he's in the pantry and what was Wendy doing? Just like hanging out and just like oh, I was leaving him in the pantry there for the rest of the, the winter. Yeah, I know, right? What the heck was she doing? Yeah, I so think she was. No, she was. She was hiding in the room with Danny. Yeah, that's when the snow. Then they realized the snow cat and everything and was broken in the rain. Yeah, like she had left Danny in the room. Some just left him in the room. I mean, she assumed it was safe, and, obviously. And <laughs> this is when the ghosts were on the other side of the pantry, like yeah. telling like Jack, like, "Hey, uh, I don't think you've killed your family yet." <laughs> it was like that wasn't the deal. <laughs> he's like, well, they were. It was rough, and I like the Simpsons version where he's like eating everything, and the Homer's eating everything in the pantry. Well, I mean, I guess Jack did eat a few things. He had a peanut butter jar open. Yeah, <laughs> there's some Nilla wafers in there. <laughs> and I also like when this in the Simpsons when they open the door, and this one you just hear the door unlock, and like Jack comes out. Yeah. In the Simpsons, like Jason, Freddy, Pinhead, and all the like monsters yeah. open the door and crap them. Yeah, get my guy out of here. <laughs> no, don't remember all the, that. All, all the boogeymen came and grabbed him. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, this is where he proceeds to uh, here's Johnny the bedroom. And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, Danny Torrance goes full red room. Red room. Yeah. Red room. Totally haunting, by the way. Red man. room. Yeah. Like we say, uh, it might be a, a message from the future. Yeah. So we'll find out what that means and shortly. But he red room. He red room. And then Jack, here's Johnny. They proceed. Uh, they proceed to chase Wendy and Danny. D- Jack proceeds to chase Wendy and Dan- uh, Danny on the roof of the Overlook. Yes, and then they all like slide down, and somehow like Wendy like breaks away, and then Dick shows up. Yeah, and gets like axed in the back like by Jack. No, right in the chest, like immediately. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is where Jack starts chasing just Danny, and then Wendy finds like all the ghosts. Yeah, in the hotel. Including like one dude's getting like a BJ from like a bear, a that, bear man in a bear suit. Yeah, that was weird. I'm like, what the? F- I don't remember this at all. Yeah, and then this other dude was like, uh, "Cool party, isn't it?" <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like, got like a split wound on top of his head, like he was hit with an axe. Yeah, and from what I hear, I think that was like a mob like hideout you know, to kill people there or something like that. Uh, uh, like some, there was always all, some sort of crime that kept on happening at the Overlook Hotel, and they're just echoing through. So uh, Danny is running through the hedge maze we totally glossed over <laughs> right. outside. And then he starts retracing his steps so Jack can get lost. And since it's the dead yeah. of winter, Jack freezes to death. Yeah. And then remember, like we said Dick Halloran showed up eventually. Yeah. They took his snow cat and went home. Yep. It's like so he. I, I guess he did something. Yeah. He was a. Uh, he was great. So yeah. So Jack Torrance uh, froze to death. And then just as uh, we see Jack freeze to death, looking all frozen and funny, the camera pans back inside the <laughs> hotel. Yeah. Like a, like a steady cam and it looks at a picture from. Uh, the July 4th ball, 1921, and you see a bunch of people in old-timey 20, 1920s yep. picture. It looks like the ballroom from uh, when Jack was there Yeah, and that one night, and the camera pans, and it pans, and it pans, and who's there front and center, 1921? Jack Torrance. Jack Torrance. And the thing is, he had made a mention at the beginning of this movie. You've always been the caretaker. Not that. Well, yeah. He, yeah, Jack Torrance said, I immediately fell in love with this place. It's like I knew what was around every corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that and the Grady he says, you've always been the caretaker here. Always. Smash cut to in the middle of the forest somewhere. There's a, a family out like camping. Yeah. And a little girl playing by a stream where her parents are, I guess, somewhere else doing something. Yeah. It's, it's and a, and a woman comes parents. up to her in a hat. In a weird flat top hat. In a weird flat top hat. And she goes, this isn't my only hat, but it's my favorite hat. Let me yeah. show you a magic trick. Like the Joker. Let me show yeah. you a magic trick. And she just starts like, like show, oh, she's, isn't she showing her like flowers? Like, yeah. So the little girl has a flower in her hand and then she's like, oh, let me show you a magic trick. She gets her hat, folds it this way. Looks like it's empty. She does this. 
She's like, reach in. Meanwhile, the girl, don't mind him. Yeah. He's just my friend. Yeah. Don't mind him. He's just my friend too because and people are like, people oh. are like appearing. Yeah, from behind the <laughs> from, thicket. From behind it. Yeah. yeah. Don't mind him. And then she reached, she's like, don't mind them. Just reach in. Mm-hmm. So she reaches in and she pulls out a purple flower. And she's like, <gasps> actually, before that, she's like, can you tell me what color this flower is before you pull it out? Ooh. She's like, it's purple. And she's like, it's violet. Mm-hmm. And then what? A couple of more friends pop up from there, and the little girl's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm gonna go to my parents." It's like, "Oh, why are you holding me so hard?" And uh, yeah, so we so get there. Something has happened, <laughs> and yeah. I like it. I like that. I like it. Have you watch them like Grindhouse style, like back to back? It's yeah, like a cold like. <laughs> meanwhile, elsewhere, yeah. <laughs> elsewhere in the world, <laughs> elsewise, <laughs> and then we jump back in time again, back in time to the Overlook Hotel with the uh, with the creepy. Uh, the creepy woman in the bathtub. Yeah. Haunting Danny Torrance. Yeah. From from Florida, apparently. Yeah. Who I was gonna say who now does not live in the snow. Yeah. Uh, who is still haunted by the ghost, especially the one in the bathtub. Yeah. And who does he run into? But the ghost of Dick Halloran. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who tells him, Listen, I know you ran into all those spooky ghosts out there and like yeah. I died. So well, here's the thing. We don't know it's a ghost of Dick Halloran. Well, Dick Halloran is we dead. we assume it's a ghost because you know the way these movies work. Mm-hmm. And they're sitting on a park bench by the beach. Because in the book, he was actually alive at this point. Okay, I, I didn't <laughs> read the book, but <laughs> I, see, there saying. you go. So they played it well then. Yes, very well. Um, so yeah, so uh, so they're they're talking, and then Dick hands him a box. He's like, "This is where I put all the oogie boogies." Essentially, you feel the box. Get a get a yeah. good hold for. He's it. like, "Smell it." <laughs> like, mm-hmm. all right, <laughs> okay. And anytime someone spooky comes to you, you just put them in that box, and yeah. you just leave them in there, and it'll be all good. Yeah. And then, like, it was actually creepy because yeah. because there were, Wendy and Danny are watching a movie. His mom uh, uh, and uh, they're watching a Bugs Bunny episode. Yeah, more more Doc. What's up, yeah. Doc? And uh, and the spooky spooky naked old lady ghost starts coming. Like, and then she's like, "Mom, I gotta take care of something." Yeah. And then he goes to the bathroom with the spooky ghost. Yeah. Right? Like he closes himself in there. And then you and then they close the door behind him. And then you hear the door sh- shut. And then you just hear like the spooky like. Yeah. And then, ah! Ah! so the ghost, something happened to the ghost. Yeah, and then uh, the door just opens and Danny walks out. Yeah. I took care of it, Mom. Yeah, and mind you, he was mute up until this time. Like yeah. he wasn't speaking. He he'd only said the red rum in the last part of the movie of the previous movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, she goes, "You all right, Danny?" And he goes, "Yeah, I'm good, Mom." And then they hug each other and go back to watching good old Bugs Bunny. Smash cut once again. Danny Torrance is an adult now, and he's a loser. Yeah, total alcoholic, total loser. He's hooking up with some chick, and then like leaves her and her baby and steals her money. Yeah, and then Dick Holler and pops up like Jiminy Cricket. He's like, <laughs> don't don't take him. You know, like he's like a cool dude. He's like, don't take your money. Yeah. Come on, come on, Doc. You can do better than that. And he's like, Ugh. <laughs> he like leaves. <laughs> Yeah, he like leaves. Town. Like she stole my money probably for the heroin. Yeah, uh, and or the, coke or whatever the hell yeah. they're doing. And then he sees like the baby like left behind, and he's like, Ugh, whatever. Yeah, he's like, here's some Cheez-Its. <laughs> Jeez. So he he keeps running, and he runs into a city with a tinier city. Yeah, runs into Cliff, who runs this tiny town. It's like a kid version of the town. Yeah, and he operates a little little merry-go-round train that just goes around the area. Yeah, and he goes, you know, people who have problems, no people have problems, and like, why don't you come with me and like, we'll go to like therapy and like, yeah. well, we'll, we'll do group and it'll be like awesome. And that's when he meets uh, Bruce Greenwood's character. I forget the name of the the, the character, but that this guy, like you said earlier, yeah. echoes the Doctor Oldman from the first mm-hmm. one. The yep. room was exact echo. It was the exact room. Yeah, it was the exact room, exact everything, which is actually one of the rooms that shouldn't exist if you actually map yeah. the uh, the place out. Uh, but he went to the group. He talked about it, and then he saw – what's his name? Bruce Greenwood. He was uh, – Fiddling with his wrist. Yeah. And he's like uh, – since, since uh, Danny – has the shine. He goes, yeah. oh, I know where your watch is at. You left it on the... He's like, you left it off on the soap dispenser. On the soap dispenser because you were too concerned about like that kid with the bone disease. Yeah. He goes, what? Son of a bitch. Yeah. And that's where he talks to him and then he gives him a job as an orderly at yeah. the hospital. Yep. And then we see a cat mm-hmm. walking up to a room. And Asriel the cat. Yeah, Asriel. And there's actual like stories of cats doing this in real life. Mm-hmm. And the science behind it is that they can smell the decay of cells. Is it? Yeah. Aww. How crazy is that? 
for 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 millennia, I think they've uh, people have said that cats are the, uh, the guardians of the underworld. Mm. So they know when someone's, I guess, going to die. Uh, so they can smell it. So Azrael goes to the person who's going to die. Yeah. And sits on their lap, and they're like, "Oh no, Azrael, the angel of death has found me." Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, "Ah, oh, fudge." And then, meanwhile, since he has the shine, Danny sees them and gives them like a happy memory. Yeah. And, like, well, they're they're talking, so it's a little back and forth, and it's this is where we hear him. Like the guy's like, "I'm afraid. Is it going to hurt?" So, I, like, I'm just trying to go to sleep, and the guy's like, and "Danny's like, you can." You can sleep. Go to sleep. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Oh, are you a doctor?" He's like, "No, I'm not a doctor. I'm just orderly." He's like, "No, you doctor sleep." <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's the name of the movie. So freaking good. I was like, "I'm out. It's done. They did it." <laughs> he's officially doc. <laughs> yeah, he's officially full, what's up, doc? Full circle. So they give him a, a room. Yeah, and the room has like a chalkboard wall, which, by the way, is kind of cool. It's super cool. Have you uh, seen cars that have that? What? Still, people paint their cars in chalkboard. Boy, that must get hot. It's it's gotta be terrible. It's super hard to wash. You can draw like dicks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he would get wrecked. <laughs> oh, oh man, <laughs> my back. Uh, so anyway, um, what happened here? Okay, so so he has got a chalkboard wall. Yeah, and it says hello one day. Yeah, and he doesn't know what it is. Yeah, he didn't write it. He didn't write it, but. Meanwhile, we smash cut to like somewhere else yeah. and a little girl is having a birthday party. Yes. And the. Okay. I'm trying to remember how this happened because now that I think about it, like this is like another power. So, that, that so we, yeah. So, so she we will say she's virtually telekinetic. She is the Jean Grey of this world. We're going to call yes, her. She, she is the best shiner. Yeah. So she is the shiniest. Mm-hmm. Um, she is, oh, oh. Uh, so her name is Abra. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. So she, so she's having a birthday party. There's a magician there, and he asks, "Does anybody know the magic words?" And she's like, "Ooh, ooh, Abra Kadabra." And he's like, "All right." And he pulls a rabbit out of his hat. And he's like, "Oh, do you guys like?" He drops all of his spoons, and she's like, "And he's like, uh, he was like, oh, I've seemed to dropped all my spoons." She's like, "I know that trick, ha ha ha." And then her parents proceed to enter their their kitchen, and all of their silverware is like just matrixed to the to their ceiling. Yes, like it is just like n- just standing on end. And this is the only time we've actually seen telekinesis from, yeah. from the shining, which is uh, I thought about like it's another power. Well, it's a, it's a, uh, there's two times in this movie. Really? Yeah, there's two times mm-hmm. where she so in the the next part it happens in the trailer. If you've seen the trailer, she throws Rebecca Ferguson's character clean across a, an aisle. So that's then the four three times then. Okay, so because because uh, uh, crow daddy. Yes, Crow Daddy. Crow Daddy. We'll talk All about right. Crow Daddy. Yeah, we'll get there. All right. <sighs> so now we smash cut five years later, ten years later, eight years. I think it eight is. years eight later, years. right in the yeah. middle. Right in the middle. <laughs> there we go. And now. uh Danny's all cleaned up. He's got an official yeah. job. As he looks like Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah. Hello there. <laughs> It looks like Obi Wan Kenobi. So I just said that. Sorry, sorry. I was just listening to our Shop Talk episode fifty. If you haven't listened to it, I said, "Hello you, there." You introduced me, and I said, "Hello there." <laughs> you said it back. All right, we're back. Okay, so now he's uh, he's he's uh, got his life together. Yeah, everything's going well. Uh, and now we smash cut back to Rose. Ab- Rose, let's smash cut to oh, Rose. Oh, Rose, yeah. Who is actually in a? She's in a movie theater with Crow Daddy, yeah, which is another vampire, and they're actually watching another woman, yeah, a fifteen-year-old girl, yeah, who, with an older dude, yes, in a movie theater. And the line goes, "He's like, you're a lot younger than you look," and she's like, "You're a lot older than you than your picture Whoa. was." And I'm just like, "Come yeah! on, man!" So anyway, uh, Crow Daddy saying. Yeah, she's got a power. She's got a shine. I've seen her do this three times. Let's let's uh, let's see what she does. Yeah. And then he whisper. She whispers in the old man's ear, like "Sleep now." Remember, yeah. remember Dark City. Sleep now. Yeah. Like that. Uh, and he falls asleep. And then she puts a snake bar. Yeah. She so she a says sna- fall even. So she says that takes his wallet, and grabs his money, and then she says now fall asleep even deeper and whips out a blade, mm-hmm. which I just realized. The first time we see a knife in this movie, and it is a knife that does in Rose the Hat. The two knives. She 
She gets her uh, her leg slashed twice. Is it? Yeah. Oh, really? It was it because that was a funny looking knife that that. Wrote no, I know it's not the same knife. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a funny hook knife. It's like a yeah, yeah. knife. But this is the first time we see a knife. The next time was that knife. The hmm. times we see knives are very important. So she has a knife. Rebecca gets hit with a knife, and then um, Dan Torrance uses the original knife that her mo- that his mom had to get back into the hotel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, look at that full full circle. Yeah, so she so she proceeds to put these snake bites in this guy's face and she's like yeah. you can explain the money, but you can't explain this. Like, yeah. oh. So as she's leaving Rose the hat like intercepts her yeah. and tells her about this fantastical world of live long and eat well yeah. and you're going to be 50 like like they like they, they, they talk about like in her, in her trailer. She's like yeah. you're going to be 15 forever springtime of your womanhood forever and ever. Um, so they proceed to turn her. Yeah. into one of their vampire kind. Yeah. Uh, a death eater, if you will. Yes. Uh, and there's actually a whole like caravan of all these weirdos. Yeah. Almost like a traveling Very circus. Very nice freaking caravan, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, every, yeah, everyone's got like RVs. And, yeah. Like, Lurch from the Adams family is there. Yeah. <laughs> he really is, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, they turn her and she like has like a horrible like like, you know, like when Blade used to take a serum. Yeah. So the way they turn her is they gave her um, part of somebody's shining that had already been eaten in and it jar. was yeah, and it violet. was it was violet mm-hmm. like from, oh, from years ago. Yes. Um, so that's happening. Meanwhile, uh, Danny is still talking to his mystery friend mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's living like a like a normal life as an orderly and then he continues to see like people like like die right yeah so it's happened a few times and now crow daddy is scouting out baseball boy yes right and they're like oh this kid's like a pitcher like he's got some sort of like like talent to him yeah it's like he's reading the pitcher's mind Mm -hmm. and they abduct him through the scooby van (laughs) yeah they with the with the new girl Mm mm-hmm with the new, oh yeah, yeah, with the with yeah. the uh, with the the pusher, the pusher, yeah, the pusher, snake that's bite sure. Annie, the pusher. Yeah. She gets the little kid to get in the van, and uh, they proceed to take him to the old the old mill, and uh, much like another Stephen King story, it fear makes them more powerful, makes yeah. them tastier. So fear makes people tastier to these people. So now baseball boy is being murdered, yeah, like slowly with a knife, yeah. With a knife, uh, and they're just consuming the steam. Abra is watching this in real time, yeah, and freaking out. Yeah, Rose the Hat can sense Abra s- watching her. Yeah, and then every time, like she takes another knife, like Abra goes crazy. Then eventually, yeah. she just says, "Like no!" And that's when Red Rum appears. Yeah, on Danny's wall, and like uh, just shatters into the wall. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy. So, like to me, that was the same message, much like in Game of Thrones. Hodor went back in time. Yes, he gave a throne. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Hodor was like this mentally handicapped dude. Yeah, and all I could say was Hodor, right? Okay. And that's all I could say, and that's how you communicated. How you doing, Hodor? How you doing, Hodor? Yeah, yeah. So there was a, a wizard, and then there'd be chased by white zombies. Okay, and then he told uh, Hodor to hold the door, but like the wizard was actually like back in time, like, oh. saying it. So he like he. His brain was like back in time when he was younger, when H- yeah. Hodor was younger, and he kept on telling him to hold the door while he was younger. Yeah. And it ruined his mind. Oh. And then in the future, he was stuck holding the door so the zombies couldn't get them. Oh. So he's whoa. Like, so he was like, hold the door, hold the door, hold the yeah. door. So it was like one of those things like, oh my God. Yeah. So to me, that's the red drum moment. In Crazy. This, okay. Hodor I can see it. I can see uh, it. But anyway, uh, Baseball boy <laughs> gets murdered. Yeah, um, and uh, Abra takes a bus to go see Danny in like the next city over. Yeah, because they're not, I guess, that far away. They're, they're a bus away, and he's like, "Yeah, we shine." And like they never met before, calls him, yeah. calls him Uncle yeah. Uncle Danny or whatever. And he says, "Like you don't want to get involved with me. I'm in trouble." Like, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> stay uh, away from me. Crazy stuffs happen. Like when when we get together, I saw the movie. You know, <laughs> I read the book. Yeah, uh, and, and she's like, "Okay, fine." I saw it happen. Who told me it didn't happen? <laughs> I saw it happen. <laughs> um, 
And then that's when Dick appears for one last time. Yeah. And he's like, you got to help that little girl. There's people out there who saw her. And these people are dangerous. Yeah, they're going to get her. And then he's like, well, how long have you been, have I been dead for? When's the last time I saw you? Things are like a ghost, like an yeah. echo out here. It's like a dream. He's like, it's like a duty. He's like, you just happened to show up in my kitchen one day. I know. It's like a dream within a dream within a dream. I think this is the last time I'll ever see you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So uh, he proceeds to contact Abra again telepathically because mm-hmm. they're going to go find Baseball Boy. Yeah. And he gets his buddy... Uh, who found him and yeah. gave him this job. So Cliff Clear is, is character uh, Billy Freeman. Who's a good dude, by the way. Yeah. He's, like, you, he's like, I guess this is a no-one scenario. You're either like right, and we find a dead boy out here, or you're wrong, and you're just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I could deal with the crazy. The other part, I don't know if I'm ready for. Mm-hmm. So they find dead baseball boy. He's like, oh, my God, I used to go hunting. Yeah. And, I, and I shot this buck, and like I couldn't find him for days. And then like one day, I smelled it. I smelled the death. And it's <laughs> like... That's what I'm smelling right now. He's like, and I, I haven't hunted I've a deer n- since. Never hunted since. Um, so um, they find Baseball Boy, yeah. and then they know that there's like someone out there. There's vampires out there. But yeah. then this is like the coolest scene in the movie. There's a couple of cool scenes where Rose the Hat and Abra confront each other. Yeah. The first one is in the grocery store. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Where where Rose the Hat's in the grocery store and she feels like the hand behind her. Yeah. And then Abra's like, stay out of my mind. And then like the grocery store like window explodes and yeah. pushes her backwards. Yeah. And then like it was like, don't touch me. <laughs> don't yeah, touch and me. I, I, I actually yelled out. I was like, dude, astral projection fights a la Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of astral projection, once like Crow Daddy and everyone finds out about this girl, like, oh my God, someone's got like crazy shine out there. Like, yeah, we yeah. gotta like find this person. She she uh, Rose the Hat astral projects out of her body yeah. and proceeds to fly yeah. over like the city like Really right, in, yeah, right into Abra's right into room, Abra's bedroom, and she's like, "Yeah, stupid girl doesn't know what she's doing." And then, like, a file cabinet appears behind yeah. her. Like, yeah, her brain's like where a, you put, yeah, where you put your thoughts. Her brain's a file cabinet, and she's like, "If you only knew, my brain's a cathedral." Yeah, right. That's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, and then like as she's going through it, like her hand gets caught, like it, it closes. Yeah, the file cabinet closes on her hand and just like shreds it, like while, while it's yeah, stuck in there. Stuck in there. Meanwhile, uh, she, Abra turns into an anime character. Yeah. So she. Yeah. So uh, what is it? So Rosa Hat turns around to see like. Like a absolutely terrifying freaking Abra who has purple no, hair and no, no eyes. Yeah, no eyes, but the rest of her face. And she's like, "Oh, let's see who you are." And then like they go, they, then you see the cathedral. Yeah, and, and she's, she's like, going through all her stuff. Like, like oh, fast forward, it's crazy. Look at all these papers; they're all crazy. I can't read. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't yeah. say anything, didn't say anything yeah. interesting, but it was just a, it, it was a, it's a really cool visual. Yeah, and then Rose is like tr- obviously trying to get back. So she's and she's got her hand of, stuck in the thing, yeah. and you just see her like ripping and shredding her oh, skin, like shredding her skin off to the bone, mm-hmm. and then. You realize her feet are actually like adhered to the ground, so she's <laughs> ripping the flesh off her feet with yeah. every backward step to fly away. Yeah, and then she eventually like breaks free. Yeah, and then she just like completely like. <laughs> yeah, she, she just <laughs> as a kid say back. she yeets back to her body. Whoa! Yeah, <laughs> and then just hits her her actual real life body and flies right off the top of her van. Yeah. It's pretty great. And it was like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. And like, I don't know if this happened like right then and there, but that's when like Lurch, the uh, the vampire dies of old no, age. No, that was right there. Yeah. I think that was right there. Yeah, yeah, Because they're running out of shine. You know, yeah. it might be Netflix or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just no more creativity out there. <laughs> had to resort to cannibals to stay alive. Um, but he, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lurch, the, the, uh, the old man grandpa or whatever. Literally just like seizes out and yeah, falls apart. Grandpa Flick. Grandpa Flick seizes out and just falls apart, and all the other vampires just eat his shine. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like steam. They call it steam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes out of them, uh, they're like, "Oh, we got to find this like girl." And like, do we like do we eat her or do we turn her? Oh no, we eat her and we eat her slow yeah. because they can they can like keep her like hostage. Yeah, for years and years and just like torture her and like eat her like steam like we don't need someone that powerful having our power so now that doc to- no not doc now that dick halloran told uh danny to go find abra he's on yeah. board and so is uh so is his buddy yeah 
and they go. <laughs> this, is a, this is a funny scene where they go to Abra's house, and she's like a teenage girl, and then like the dad's like, "Who the hell are these guys?" Yeah, <laughs> like we're going to see your like beat them up, and yeah. he's like, "Abra, you got to tell him." She's like, "I did. He wouldn't. Sh- he wouldn't believe me." Yeah. So then she gives him like the gnarliest flash. Yeah, like a uh, force. Yeah, <laughs> force. He's like, injection. "Watch." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he now. hits the ground, and he comes back inside, hands shaking, just trying to pour himself like like a couple of fingers of whiskey. And it was a funny like sober scene where like he's like. Like offering them the whiskey, and they're like, yeah. oh no no no, yeah, no, yeah. no 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 no, <laughs> <laughs> like we're good, yeah, we're good. Um, and uh, that's when they form the plan that they're going to go to the park and like lure Abra out there in yeah. the open. And this scene was funny because it was just a massacre. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So they like, so Abra is so good at what she can do that she uh, project, uh, she um projects her likeness onto a stuffed bunny much like Luke Skywalker. Yes, just like <laughs> literally just like Scoot Lu- Scoot like Walker <laughs> Scoot like <laughs> Scoot like Walker <laughs> trying to really Sp- avoid those space balls too. <laughs> <laughs> really trying to just make sure these videos stay up on YouTube. Yeah, Scoot ball blocker. <laughs> there you go. So Scoot ball blocker is a <laughs> that's a new character. <laughs> So so she's you know she's sitting on a on a park bench and uh, snake bite Annie yeah shows snake up. bite Annie shows up with like this freaking a syringe yeah syringe <laughs> syringe of Drano and danger yeah pretty much <laughs> stranger danger in a vial yeah it's like, and, don't, uh, don't move don't move we almost got you there yeah so she stabs God, obviously proceeds to put it in there just relax we're friends well shit the way they talked you up I was thinking it'd be a little harder than that. <laughs> And she's like, oh, what the F is this? It's a bunny rabbit. It's, a <laughs> it's bunny. Bugs Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, kidding. all these vampires just proceed to get clocked Dude, by, with by two uh, guys with sniper rifles. Yeah, with the freaking old school like cowboy guns. Yeah. Um, D- Danny and, and his buddy uh, Billy. Billy, yeah. Dan- Danny and his buddy uh, Billy are just sniping like these vampires. Yeah. And then comes like the saddest scene in the whole oh, movie. And the thing is, if you watch any movie, you know there cannot be any give without some take. So you're just waiting for it to happen. Yeah, something bad to happen because they basically killed like 15 vampires. Yeah. They're just and, they like, all, and they all just turn to steam when they get shot like Blade movies. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Snake Bite Annie gets shot. And then right before she dies, she tells she tells Billy. Yeah, it was actually Billy who shot her. Yes. He tells he tells Billy kill yourself, and then Billy just shoots his head. Yeah, it's like no. Yeah, that was really. It's sad. like, damn it, Danny, why didn't you involve your shining power? No, I know, and that's then, strong enough. No, no. And then, and then uh, Billy. Think by Annie proceeds to disappear, and much like yep. the Vampire and Blade. Meanwhile, while this is happening, uh, the one where's the smart one? Where's the crow daddy? Yeah, crow daddy got wise and went to Abra's house. Yeah, killed her dad Ugh. and abducted her. Oh. Uh, so yeah. so now we don't know where she is. Yeah, and he has her sedated. He actually yeah. he actually got her stabbed, and he's like all mad. He's like, "You killed a lot of good people today." Yeah, they were my friends. They didn't need to die today. What's up with that? Um, so he's like, "We're gonna take care of you now, nice and slow, because of that." And then meanwhile, since she's drugged, mm-hmm. Danny manages to what's what's the word possess her. Yeah, Man, yeah. Just to possess her while he's in the car, and then yeah, uh, cause she she's in and out of consciousness. Mm-hmm. So since Danny's pretty much t- taking control of her body, mm-hmm. and uh, he's able to talk to Crow Daddy. Yeah, and it's like, like who are you, friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you got like my friend in your car. He's like, well, and then yeah, and then he reaches out to the other gun. He's like, now it wouldn't be smart if you killed your biggest prize. Mm-hmm. He's like, what you should have done was worn your safety belt. Yeah. <laughs> and then Danny grab uses the force. He force. He's like he does this. Yeah, and makes I Crow Daddy. Please watch this on YouTube because it's so stupid. He's like, yeah. yeah. And then Crow Daddy <laughs> goes, uh, <laughs> fatality. It was actually really funny because it happened so quickly. Yeah, he just he's not wearing a seatbelt. He hits the tree. What do you think's gonna he happen? Eats through the windshield. <laughs> yeah. and just like slides, and then and then Abra gets up. She goes, I hope that hurts. And then he just like. He well, did, no, she says, I hope that hurts. And she goes, a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Abra's a freaking fiend, man. Well, she killed, his, he killed her dad. Yeah, yeah. So. No, she, uh, well deserved. Yeah. Not her dad, the guy. Yeah. Um, so he disappears just like all the other vampires. Uh, and that's when uh, Danny picks up uh, picks up Abra 
And then now we know that there's somewhere a wounded rose who just lost her whole family. Yeah. Like, mind you, every time one of these these uh, soul suckers got killed, she's acting like a part of like Harry Potter's Voldemort acting like a part of a whole cr- uh, horcrux is getting destroyed. She's like, no, 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 we no, no Harry Potter references. We're going back to Star Wars with this. You remember when order 66 <laughs> happened and you would have felt the disturbance in the force. <laughs> Oh, I feel a great sadness. <laughs> Something happened. No, but you're humanizing her. She can suck it. <laughs> yeah, well, Voldemort sucks. <laughs> what did Voldemort do? What was the what was the most horrible thing Voldemort did? He killed wizards. He literally killed Harry Potter's parents. So he killed Harry Potter. Did he kill uh, Dumbledore? Uh, no, he didn't kill Dumbledore. But he he Snape used killed his, Dumbledore. Yeah, Snape killed Dumbledore. <laughs> just because, uh, yeah, so we're <laughs> sorry. You know what? Let's not. Dive no, in I want to know what's the so, worst like. Come on, man. He's Voldemort. Like literally the he who shall not be named. But has he what's the most horrible thing he did in the movies? Uh he killed Harry Potter's parents. That didn't he happen. F- we we heard about that. Inference. We see it in the movie. Okay, but so so we see him do the Avada Kedavra or whatever, and his mom jumps in front to block the killing spell, killing curse. Harry Potter gets saved through a little lightning bolt, as everybody knows. Oh wow, well, almost lost the set there. And <laughs> So his parents get killed. He also um, used what's called a cruciatus curse on uh, on Neville Longbottom's parents. And uh, yeah, another What's character. My porn name. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's your long cheeks over here. Yeah, wolf. <laughs> and, uh, By the way, that's Adam Carolla's joke. But yeah, I, I like it. That's pretty good. It's pretty yeah, good. it's a good one. Um, yeah, so just not good things. Just not. He killed a lot of things to get to where he was. So you know. Dude sucks is what I'm saying. So anyway, back to this movie <laughs> and back to order 66. So it was that sad okay. and also just as terrible. So now Abra's on the street and Danny comes to come pick her up. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so here's the here's the thing. Here's the showdown. The final the final countdown. The final <laughs> countdown. Dun, so now dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's a weird song. So now Rose is on the war path. Yeah, she is pissed. So she proceeds to eat all the why didn't I don't know why they didn't give any to grandpa flick mind you. Yeah, but she they, had like these like these grande venti cups of I know <laughs> of <laughs> souls. They looked like German like uh like like you know like ger- super fancy steins. Yeah, like German steins for Oktoberfest. Yeah. It was like she had Oktoberfest of souls <laughs> and just like slurped them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she really did. She, she <laughs> he sucked them down. It was horrible. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, uh, Danny's like, there's a place. There's a place I was when I was a kid a long time ago. Dangerous yeah. place for people like us, <laughs> but maybe be more dangerous for her. Because yeah. If it's <laughs> dangerous for us, it's got to be dangerous for her, right? Yeah. So he proceeds to take her to the Overlook Hotel yeah. where this whole story once began. They go to the Overlook Hotel Yeah. and they can see her like in the distance. Yeah. And then like. Danny's like, I got to go wake up the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which was totally crazy. He did exactly what his mom was doing. Yeah, uh, turning on the the boiler and then yeah. as he moved like the lights turned on, it was all creepy. Yeah. Um and uh they they go inside and uh they're waiting outside but they can see Rose in the distance like coming up. Yeah. Um and uh oh, so Rose shows up and she finds like the blood the, the, like the blood out of the elevator. Oh, yeah. And she's and she, like, what's wrong? What, this place is weird. What yeah, is she just kind of smirks at it like, that's neat. Huh. <laughs> like, okay. I'm like, oh, weird. That's weird. The blood, I would assume, got off on the third floor. Uh, and that's when she thinks she finds Abra, but ends up in the, she ends up in the uh, the maze, right? Oh, right. Yes, she ends up in the in the maze, which yeah. is even larger now. Yeah, it's 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 like a forever maze, like yeah. uh, you know, like a like a horror. Oh movie. wait, yeah, no. So she actually did. So she was at, so the way this scene played out is she was at Jack's typewriter, and Dan and Abra were at the staircase where Jack had been hit by his. We missed the whole part where Abra was waiting outside, and then Danny went to the bar. Maybe something warm to push away such unpleasantry. Don't you want to hear about it? She was your wife. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. Oh shh! Danny went to the bar. Okay, let's let's go back. Let's backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I like that sound. <laughs> yeah. Danny went to the bar and yeah. left Abra outside for a minute. Yeah. He said, uh, "Like, give me a holler when uh when you see uh, when you see." Uh, whatever the hell name is something Rose. the hat Rose the hat. 
Yeah, post start pulling up. Um, so he goes. Danny goes to the bar and finds his dad. Yeah, with the name tag still says Lloyd. Yeah, it's still like says the first Lloyd. Guy. And uh, that's when they talk about like the drink and he's like the drink is good. You got to drink the drink. Yeah. Because uh, there was a scene right before he went after Abra where he almost drank. Yes. And he almost drank here too. Are you gonna take your medicine? I'm not. No, no drink for you. Yeah, it's crazy. He's like, no soup for you. No drink for you. And then that's when Rose the Hat enters, and then they proceed to the the uh, the the maze. The maze, yeah. The maze. And uh, so this is actually an illusion. Yeah. From uh, Abra, who is stabbing her legs and like running, like, oh yeah, you, you little girl, you remind me just of me, like me. But uh, you know, you think you think you'll live forever when you're as old as me. You're just gonna want more time. Yeah. So that's the one thing you'll never get back. It just rants about time, and Abra just keeps running and slashing her. Meanwhile, one of those boxes that housed the ghost yeah. is like appearing behind, and Rose. it's slowly opening behind her, and like like a Venus flytrap, yeah, like, about to like trap her and then she just whooshes herself back to reality and she's like this is this is a ro- this is an ever this is a trap and she's like enough yeah we're like all right damn that was that easy for you okay and now we're at that staircase where danny uh where no where wendy and jack yeah we're at and then uh rose is like how did we miss you yeah. where were you like this whole like time we didn't like know where you were but look how powerful you are like yeah all like darth uh Darth Sidious on you. You, <laughs> yeah. you and should have been my apprentice. But only that somehow she gets the upper hand on him, a grown man. And she like he has the axe. Yes, by the way, and she somehow gets the upper hand on him just like Wendy did. Yeah, but he she ends up with the axe. Yeah, she ends up with the axe and then just uh, like stabs him in the leg. Yeah, in the leg. She's like, oh, it looks like I nicked your croy artery. You yeah. probably have like another few minutes to live now. Yeah, so she's causing him pain. Yeah, she's like sticking suffering. In, she's sticking his finger in the wound and yeah. then just like and then like she's like eating his like shine his like, Oh my God, where were you? You taste like whiskey. Yeah, I'm like, so what? tasty. Yeah, weird. And then um, then she's like, what's that? And she sees all the boxes. What's in those? In his yeah. head. And she's like, what is this? Something special? She says, no, they're starving. Yeah. And she opens the ghosts, uh, opens the boxes and all the ghosts from the overlook. Yeah, that he has locked up in his in his mind. The naked lady, the twins, the, the yeah. cool party guy. Yeah, every crazy person. Yeah, they're all there and they just proceed to eat Rose the Hat. Yeah, and not just eat her, like they're morphing into her face mm-hmm. and just like, like obviously because they get more, more of the soul stuff, they make them suffer. So it was just... Pretty, pretty gnarly stuff. And then just as they're done with eating Rose, they turn to Danny and goes, come play with us, Danny. Yeah. Forever and ever. And then they eat Danny. Yeah. And then he like he gets one white eye and one normal eye and he, guess what? He begins to chase Abra around the hotel. Just like Jack. Sa- yeah. Just like Jack. Same hobble and everything with the axe. Mm-hmm. So he's able to uh, not kill Abra. Yeah. Uh, he's able to like, here's this isn't you. You you're still a good man. And he's like, and then the, then she says like the ghost of the house or whoever like yeah is the one taking over Danny. The the one taking over Danny. Uh, you forgot that he turned on the boiler, so like the thing's like about to explode. Yeah, the house is like, uh oh. Yeah, and then Abra gets away, and then Jack goes to the not Jack, <laughs> Jack. Uh, Danny goes to the boiler room where he finds his mom. Yeah, the ghost of his mom waiting there for him, and then the two just burn. Yeah, the Overlook yeah. Hotel has just been set ablaze. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, uh, cut to like the epilogue here where yeah. the ghost of Danny is hanging out with Abra. Yeah. And they're just like talking like, yeah, the, the place burned down and like uh, it looks like you, you're you cool in the afterlife. She's like, yeah, yeah I'm all right. <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. like, yeah, I'm yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right. cool. It's all good. All's well that ends well. And then her mom comes up and she's like, who are you talking to? She's like, no <laughs> you know, one. Another Star Wars reference where like the force ghost appears. <laughs> Oh right! Jeez, I, I, did, I never realized how Star Warsy this movie was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> until now. So ridiculous. Um, so the mom comes and then she's like, she's like nothing. Yeah, and then she's like, no, I was talking to Uncle Uncle Danny. He's like yeah. in the afterlife, but he's happy. And she's like, okay. And then just as like, just as like the story ends, she's like, oh, I got to go take care of something. And she yeah. goes, walks to the bathroom, and the naked lady ghost. Old, yeah, the old, zombie, gross old lady. Just she's like. She just closes the door with her, and then that's it. Yeah, just cuts to the end. And that was our shining duology. Yeah, the shining and Doctor Sleep. Sorry, wrong one. The shining duology. I know. 
I like it. I like The yeah, Shining. I like them I, both, man. So we got to figure out what we're going to watch next year for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, but definitely check out The Shining. Definitely a scary movie. Definitely yes. check out Doctor Sleep. Tell your friends about Doctor Sleep. Yeah, not watch them back to back. Have a yeah. have a back to back grindhouse because I like it how they they are sewn together. If you watch yes. them back to back, very sewn together. And I'm glad they didn't deep fake Jack Nicholson's face. I'm so glad they didn't deep fake anybody. They just got actors to play them that were very similar, but the, and it worked. It worked. Maybe. I think it worked very well for uh, for Jack Torrance's character in the bar because. Um, because Dan didn't immediately recognize him, and it was just off enough where you were just like, "Is he his dad? Is he not his dad?" Oh, it totally was. He had the receding yeah, hairline. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Talked yeah. like him. The big guys had the face. But the uh, the, the 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 actor Henry Thomas. He's always in uh, Mike Flanagan shows and movies. Okay, but you know where the entire universe knows him from? No idea. Elliot from ET. Really? That is Elliot from ET played. What in the heck? What yeah. in Tornation? He turned into a man. But, oh my God. I listened to Shop Talk 50 also, by the way. Yeah. I, it may date this episode just a little bit, but man, I felt so old listening to that one. Yeah, I did too. Oh my God. <laughs> that punk kid ruining my fucking day. <laughs> I was doing the dishes going, oh man. That kid backwards. is at least 25 years old right now. <laughs> and still a solid 10 years younger than us. <laughs> at least. What happened to us? <laughs> Each, each time is like a number. Time is the fire in which we burn. Yeah, we but anyway, check this. out The Shining. Happy Halloween, everyone. Yes. Remember, it's, it's the day that the dead can walk the earth. So, I guess. yeah. It's like the, every. every the, uh, Go get your candy corn. And in case you didn't know, <laughs> we call this set the Overlook set because Ooh. it overlooks the cemetery. <laughs> we were just talking. Someone keeps opening my Swiffer. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the weirdest ghost power ever. <laughs> so weird. If you're gonna open the Swiffer thing, at least like mop the floor. Yeah, oh my god, if they were mopped tomorrow, I'd be like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> you walk into your kitchen and slip, you're like, it's clean. <laughs> it's clean. Thank you, ghost. Okay, well anyway. <laughs> happy Halloween, everyone. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, yeah. Facebook, uh, Patreons, uh, everywhere. I'm your host, Mark Rubalcaba, joined once again by Mr. Ail Panetta for Clubhouse Movies Podcast. We will catch you next time and next Halloween.